this is the Arduino Due. It's kind of the lost child of Arduino boards. Over a decade ago, it made a splash as the first 32-bit microcontroller development board that Arduino offered. But I can't really say that I've heard much of it since. I gotta tell you though, this might be one of the coolest looking Arduino boards ever made. I feel like if I pulled back a panel on Starship Enterprise, There'd be a row of these things just looking kind of futuristic and blinking. As you can see, this board is big. It's from the Mega family of Arduino boards, and it shares the same size and pinout as the Arduino Mega and the newer Arduino Giga. I mean, just look at the main microcontroller on this thing. It's big enough to be mistaken for a small pancake. This is the SAM 3X8E. It has an ARM Cortex M3 CPU, and it clocks in at 84 megahertz. That's about five times faster than the Arduino Mega, but only a fifth the speed of the newer Arduino Giga. It's got 96 kilobytes of SRAM. That's 12 more times than the Arduino Mega, but 10 times less than the Giga. And it sports 512 kilobytes of flash memory. That's twice as much of the Mega, but only a quarter of what the Giga has. Are you starting to see a trend here? It's like the Due is the middle brother of the Mega and the Giga. And if you've ever had a middle brother, you know they're like the forgotten children of the family. They'll never have as much attention as the oldest, and never get as spoiled as much as the youngest. It's a tough life for all you middle kids out there. Like its Mega and Giga brethren, the Arduino Due has a ton of input-output pins. 54 digital pins, 12 that can be used as PWM, 12 analog input pins, plus two pins that can connect to a digital to analog converter, and two pins for using the CAN bus protocol. I'd love to see a project that actually uses all of this I.O. Now speaking of projects, are you working on an Arduino project right now, or maybe you have one in mind? Have you taken some time to plan it out? You might be surprised that a little bit of planning can go a far way. I have made a small workbook that you can download for free. It's going to help you map out all the steps you're going to need to do in order to actually bring your thing to life. You can get it at the link in the description or at this QR code right here. Now as far as pin current limits go, the Due is a little bit tricky. You probably know this, okay? But you can't have too much current go through a microcontroller pin. Otherwise, it can get too hot and actually damage the integrated circuit. That's why microcontrollers have current limits on the pins. Usually, when you buy an Arduino board, it says, hey, the max current is XYZ limit. For example, the Arduino Mega has a DC current per I.O. pin of 20 milliamps. But for the Due, it depends on which pin you're using, if it's in group 1 or group 2. And if you want to figure that out, you have to refer to the data sheet for the microcontroller, which is sort of a pain in the butt. Group 1 can source 15 milliamps and sync 9 milliamps, and Group 2 can source 3 milliamps and sync 6 milliamps. Of course, if you don't know which pins are Group 1 and Group 2, it doesn't make much of a difference. So I made a little chart that kind of maps that out. You can find it in the link in the description. But here's my favorite feature of the Arduino Due board. It's the Nuke button. I mean, technically they call it the Erase button. But it allows you to completely wipe out the flash memory on the chip in case, well, in case you totally screw something up and the board doesn't load anymore. Of course, I could see pressing that button just because I'm sick and tired of my code not working. And if I ever see an Arduino Due in the wild in somebody else's project, you can be sure that I'm going to press that button just for the fun of it. Now, you may have noticed that the Arduino Due has two micro USB connectors. What's up with that? Well, the one next to the power jack is the programming port. This is what most Arduino boards have. It's how you load code from your computer to the microcontroller. But the one next to the reset button is called the native USB port. And this allows you to hook up stuff like mice or keyboard to the Due as if it were the host. Here's how it works. First, you grab yourself a USB peripheral like a mouse or keyboard. Then you get an adapter. It's called an OTG adapter or on-the-go adapter that goes from the peripheral device to the Duo's micro native USB port. Then when you want to get data from the peripheral, you use the USB host library that's provided by Arduino. And this allows the Arduino Due to act as a USB host and it can read input from the device. I could see that as a pretty neat feature to use. You may have noticed this by now, but the Arduino Due, unlike the Arduino Mega, operates at 3.3 volts. 
So you want to be sure not to apply more than 3.3 volts to any of the pins, otherwise you can risk damaging the board. Now powering this board is pretty straightforward. The easiest way is to use either one of those micro USB ports. You just plug it into a computer or maybe a battery pack with a micro USB connection. You can also supply between 7 to 12 volts to the VN pin or to the power jack. Now, most Arduino boards have step-down converters and voltage regulators on them. The Arduino Due is no different. It's got a step-down converter that's going to take that 7 to 12 volts and then output a regulated 5 volts. That 5 volts then gets fed into a voltage regulator, which outputs 3.3 volts for the components and the board and all that stuff. Now, not to get too nerdy here, but I got to say, I really love these power tree diagrams that Arduino has on its data sheet it really spells out the power path, which I think can be handy for trying to understand how to power these things. So when would you buy an Arduino Due for your project? Well, if you need lots of input output pins, then the Arduino Due is perfect. If you need more memory for your program than the Arduino Mega provides, then I think the Arduino Due is a good option. If your project needs a DAC, then the Due has two DAC pins for you. If you want a mid-range processor that can handle more than the Mega, then the Dway is a good fit as well. So here's a little heuristic, and I think this is a mostly true statement, but feel free to school me in the comments. If you are going to buy an Arduino Mega, you're like, yep, I think a Mega is going to be right, but you don't really care about having a 5-volt operating voltage, then the Arduino Due can do everything a Mega can do, but it's much more feature-rich. Plus, it costs just as much as the Mega, coming in at just under $50 USD. Now, there is one exception here. The Mega has 15 PWM capable pins versus the Dway's 12 PWM pins. So if you need to maximize your PWM pin count, then the Mega is the winner. But why wouldn't you buy an Arduino Due? Well, if you plan on interfacing with 5-volt components and you don't want to have to deal with level shifting, then you're probably better off sticking with your Arduino Mega if you still need all the I.O. But if you don't need a bunch of I.O., then you might be better off going with one of Arduino's newer and less expensive development boards, maybe the Arduino R4, one of the Nano boards, or one of the Maker boards. Now, if you're a total beginner at Arduino, the Due is probably not the board for you. You're just not going to find nearly as many tutorials about it as the Arduino Mega or the Arduino Uno R3. If you need Wi-Fi or BLE connectivity, the Due doesn't have either of these, so you'd be better served jumping up to the Arduino Giga. But what really matters is your project. What kind of development board does your project need? Now, like I mentioned before, if you want to get some clarity about how to actually build your project, check out this workbook that I put together. It's going to help you map out all the steps you're going to need to do in order to actually bring your thing to life. You can get it at the link in the description or at this QR code right here. I think you're going to find it really helpful. Now, if you are interested in the Arduino Due, then you will definitely want to check out this video right here about the Arduino Giga. The Giga is the newest kit on the block from the Arduino Mega family of boards. It's got Wi-Fi and BLE. Let's just say this thing packs a punch. You can learn more about it right up here.